Happy Sunshine, welcome back to my channel. We're going through the transcript of the identity hearing from Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. Uh, we've gotten through page 30 and Parker Steele or Still or however it is you spell or pronounce his name is on the stand. And there's some interesting things that happened right before he was called. Uh, let me get up to page 21. So Judge Deborah says, you may call your witness, and the prosecution, Ms. Walters, says, Your Honor, may the government just have a brief minute to provide some Giglio information to Mr. Bowes as well. And we looked over here at what Giglio is all about. It's a United States Supreme Court in which the court held that the prosecution's failure to inform the jury that a witness had been promised not to be prosecuted we're going to highlight that section in exchange for his testimony was a failure to fulfill the duty to present all material evidence to the jury and constituted a violation of due process requiring a new trial so this is a reversible error it uh, it's going to end in a mistrial and require that the government retries the person all over again if they don't do this in all of my years as a cop, which wasn't that many, I've got seven years total among three different departments, or sorry, three different time zones and four different departments. So at no time am I aware ever that a law enforcement officer was offered the pro or promise not to be prosecuted in exchange for their testimony on a case that they were only investigating. If you're only investigating a case and that case does not involve you except for the fact that you're investigating it, there's no need for Giglio. I'm not aware of this ever happening to anybody unless there was some shit going on behind the scenes, some cops were dirty, and one needed to testify against another cop, then they would offer this. So I am, I am without any idea of why Giglio information is being provided here before this FBI agent testifies. What, what possibly is going to come out of his testimony that he could be held liable for. And the only thing that I can think of is that he's not being fully truthful, didn't want to testify, and the prosecution still wants him to testify to this, even though it may not be truthful, and this guy doesn't want to be nailed for perjury. That's the only thing I can think of, and that is only speculation. I want to make that clear. That's only speculation, but that's the only one that I can think of right now. If anybody can explain why an FBI agent has Giglio information related to his testimony, I would be very interested to hear that. So let's go back to end of page 30 and we're just going to continue reading where we left off. We can remember that the very last thing that happened was that Ms. Walters in her questioning has redefined the word subject as suspect in reference to Heather Ann Tucci. Yes, ma'am, we made an arrest of Mr. Randall Bean, and at the scene there were two other individuals. They gave me a piece of paper with a phone number and a name Heather on it. Subsequent to that arrest, we obtained video and audio evidence that indicated Miss Tucci Giraffe had a role in this matter, including evidence showing that she was involved in a call to an RV dealership and a subsequent video and audio evidence where she identifies the scheme online. 
And in those particular videos, can you actually see the defendant, Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe? See, she's already, she's, she's identifying Heather as, as the defendant here. This, this is, it's probably legal the way it's phrased here, but this is leading in, in the ways that we know as far as uh, what's going on with the straw man and these, uh, and these courts with defendant and plaintiff. In one of the two I'm referencing, yes, ma'am, I was able to see her with initials at the bottom of the screen. And did you review any other information from criminal databases in determining or identifying Heather Antucci? Sure, yes ma'am. As a normal part of the investigation, we do a driver's license check and what we refer to commonly as the NCIC database. Permission to approach the witness, Your Honor. You may. I'm showing you what's been marked as government exhibit number two and has previously provided and has been previously provided to the defense counsel. Do you recognize government exhibit number two? Yes, ma'am, I do. What is government exhibit number two? This is what, in the course of an investigation, this is what we normally do. This is the document provides driver's license information as well as, again, what we refer to as an NCI check on an individual. And who was the target of that specifically NCIC check? This one specifically, ma'am, as identified on the document as Heather Antucci Giraffe. And is this the name contained specifically on government exhibit number two? Yes, ma'am, I'm looking at government exhibit number two and the name there is precisely that. Can you also tell me what the date of birth is? Yes, ma'am, the date of birth, the way these documents read, 1972-07-30, so that would be July 30th, 1972. Is there also an address noted on government exhibit number two? Yes, ma'am, there's an address. There, the says primary contact address, 29 Western Avenue, Lannan, Massachusetts, or MA for Massachusetts, 01904. And other than the main date of birth and address, is there anything else contained in government exhibit number two that assisted you in your investigation as to Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe? Yes, ma'am. There is two photographs here of Miss Tucci Giraffe that are contained. There's also other information here, social security number, height, gender, what we would call just regular identifiers. And is government exhibit number two a fair and accurate copy of the printout that you generated during the course of your investigation of this wire fraud bank fraud matter? Yes, ma'am, this is a fair and accurate representation. So I wanna point out here that, uh, that Parker still is saying that he's the one that generated government exhibit number two. Yes, ma'am, this is a fair and accurate representation. This document would have been provided by me, by our NCI people at the office. His testimony makes no fucking sense, guys. Yes, ma'am, there is an address. There the says primary contact address, 29 Western Avenue, Lannan, MA for Massachusetts. Yes, ma'am, this is a fair and accurate representation. This document would have been provided by me by our NCI people at the office. So up here under this question on line 15, Ms. Walters is asking Parker Still if this is an accurate copy of the printout that you generated, you being Parker Still. This document would have been provided by me by our NCI people at the office. Well, who is this document provided by? I cannot fathom any reason why someone who is an FBI agent is talking like this, even if they're right out of the academy. But this guy, like, let's scroll back all the way up to his experience and stuff of when he's being directly examined. So 
He's currently employed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Knoxville Division. He's been there approximately five years. And before FBI in Knoxville, he was a practicing attorney for seven and a half years. During that time, he worked on both sides of the fence, prosecution and defense. This dude is a pawn of the court. But he also served as a short time as a pro tem municipal court judge. This guy is a cop, a lawyer, and a fucking judge. And he cannot talk in complete sentences? Are you fucking kidding me? Who the hell is Parker Steele? I don't trust him at all based on this testimony. And I have a hard time imagining that any of you can trust him as well. All right. Yes, ma'am, this is a fair and accurate representation. This document would have been provided by me by our NCI people at the office, whatever that means. Ms. Walters, at this time, Your Honor, the government seeks to admit and publish to the court government exhibit number two. Mr. Bowes, objection, Your Honor. And really, the objection here should be based on his testimony, and we can't ignore anything that's happened in your court already. He said it's generated by him and by his NCI people at the office. Uh, who, is it, who is it generated by? Nobody's taking responsibility here. This, this is either one of the most lackadaisically slapped together cases with no attention to detail, or it's a hoax and this is nothing more than a Hollywood script, or there's something really dark and nefarious at foot here. This is by far the most non-standard case that I have seen and read through in a transcript. The court will admit government exhibit two over objection, bearing in mind that the objections are those which have been previously addressed. And it's been admitted into evidence. You mentioned that you obtained videos of Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe, and specifically, can you tell us when you obtained those videos? Yes, ma'am. When there are videos that were obtained, there was one video that was obtained for the indictment and subsequent videos after the indictment. What is going on here? This is a direct question. Can you tell us when you obtained those videos? You're either going to write down a date or a time but this doesn't answer the questions yes ma'am when there are videos that were obtained there was one video that was obtained for the indictment and subsequent videos after the indictment this is incomplete this is obfuscation right here now we all know that those videos were online but he can't even answer the direct question this guy is a FBI agent, so he's a cop. He's been a lawyer on the defense and the criminal or the prosecution side, and he's been a judge. To think that this guy is testifying this way, to not answer and offer complete sentences, and that it's not uh, it's not picked up on by anyone in that courtroom. What the fuck is going on here? Can you tell us about the video that was obtained after the indictment? In one particular video, ma'am, the, again, there were multiple that were obtained after the indictment. This video depicts a, the arrest of Mr. Randall Bean and Miss Tucci Giraffe is on the telephone. And when we were able to do that, obviously the arrest is not on this video, but we can hear her conversation and also another FBI agent who was at the scene was referenced. <laughs> Again, guys, 
WTF is going on here? In one particular video, ma'am, the again, there were multiple that were obtained after the indictment. This video depicts a the arrest of Mr. Randall Bean and Miss Tucci Giraffe is on the telephone. So he starts out his answer saying, this video depicts the arrest of Mr. Randall Bean. And then in the next sentence, he says, obviously the arrest is not on this video. Where is this guy's attention to detail? What is his perception of the case? It feels like he's trying to come to an understanding of it as he is testifying. I'll let you know, any time I ever had to testify in court, I took all the case documents and I studied them for weeks before the case. I knew the case is inside and out. What the fuck is this guy doing? And in the video that you are referencing to, can you actually see the face and likeness of the defendant? Yes, ma'am. In this video, you can see Miss Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. And so I'm going to show you what's been marked as government exhibit number three. Miss Walt and Miss Walter says, and for the record, government exhibit number three was provided to defense counsel last week by email link and also provided to defense counsel today in court, Your Honor. Thank you. So Miss Walter is asking Parker Steele. Do you recognize government exhibit number three? I do, yes ma'am. What is government exhibit number three? Government exhibit three is a CD and it is both signed and signed by me and dated by me for 8-4-2017. When is the last time you reviewed government exhibit number three? It was this morning at your office, we looked at it. And does government exhibit number three represent a fair and accurate depiction of the video that you discovered in the course of your investigation of this matter? Yes, ma'am. It would be me or another investigator discovered it, but yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, again, an FBI agent who is also a prosecuting attorney and a defense attorney and a judge, it's very non-standard for him to give this response. It's on page 36, line 3. And does government exhibit number three represent a fair and accurate depiction of the video that you discovered in the course of your investigation? Yes, ma'am. It would be me or another investigator discovered it, but yes, ma'am. What? What the fuck is going on here with that? That has nothing to do with the question that was just asked of him. But have you personally reviewed it? I've reviewed, I viewed the relevant parts. Yes, ma'am. The relevant parts. So he's not saying I reviewed all of it. He's admitting that he's only reviewed part of it. I viewed the relevant parts. So. How does he know what the relevant parts are if he hasn't viewed it all? That's the question to ask right there. This guy's attention to detail is spilling out all over the fucking ground and nobody's jumping on it and seeing it. At this time, Your Honor, personally, <laughs> this doesn't make sense. At your time, Your Honor, at this time, Your Honor, personal, personally, the government wishes to admit government exhibit number three and also publish it to the court. Objection, Your Honor. Are your objections the same, Mr. Bose, as those previously articulated? Yes, Your Honor. Very well, thank you. The court will admit government exhibit number three over, except, over objection. Thank you, Your Honor. And it's admitted into evidence. Mr. Bose, will you confirm, please, whether the monitor on your table is on? It is on, Your Honor. Thank you. And a videotape is played. And, and, I mean, come on, let's, uh, on line 25 here, it says a videotape is played. There's no fucking tape here, guys. Government exhibit number 3D is a CD. It should say video CD played. 
a video played, but a video tape? I mean, come on, Barbara DeVico. I don't know where you get that from. Now, is government exhibit number three, as I played it, what you recall being on the video that you observed? Yes, ma'am. With respect to this defendant and based on your review of the NCIC report, which we don't know where that came from, other videos and this one, does the person depicted in government exhibits number two and three match? Yes, ma'am. Now, Agent Steele, did you testify in the grand jury for the purpose of obtaining the indictment, which is the subject of this removal hearing today? Yes, ma'am, I did. <clears throat> wow. There's his admission in court, page 37, line 14, where he admits that he testified and is the Parker Steele that is in this other transcript that we were looking through the other day, <clears throat> where he spells his name differently. <clears throat> and when did you testify in the, before the grand jury? July 18, 2017. So here is a when question that he answers with a date. So don't tell me this guy doesn't understand how to answer the question of when. He dodges that question of when back up here. Here's another one. When was the last time you reviewed this exhibit? This morning. He can answer the question of when. But the question of when around the, uh, the when he found the videos, oh, it's, it's, hmm. Where is the, Here it is, page 34, line 9, and specifically, can you tell us when you obtained those videos? One that was obtained for the indictment, it doesn't say when, it was saying why they obtained it. And other videos they obtained after the indictment. So, oh, you know what, before we started this court procedure, we obtained one video, and then we obtained some more after we started this procedure. That's, that's basically what he's saying, but he's dodging it. And with respect to the identity of the suspects charged in the indictment, specifically Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe, do you recall what specific information you presented to the grand jury at that time? Yes, ma'am. In that, I discussed the evidence presently in the process. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. In that, I discussed the evidence presently in the possession and that being an audio recording, a video recording that I previously referenced in this hearing today where Ms. Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe's initials were on that screen. And also in our possession, we have the NCIC report, the driver's license, and the information that we previously discussed here today. And did you have any audio evidence with respect to Heather Ann Tucci? Yes, ma'am, I had an audio recording that took place in the RV dealership. And to be specific with respect to the video evidence that you presented to the grand jury, could you clearly see the defendant in that particular item? Yes, ma'am. That you presented to the grand jury, and also the initials on the screen as well that I discussed with the grand jury. So based on your investigation, your review of Ms. Tucci Giraffe's videos, arrest photographs, and other information obtained from criminal databases, can you tell me whether you see the person named in the indictment and who you investigated here in the courtroom today? Yes, ma'am, I can. I can from my vantage point right here. I can clearly identify Miss Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. She is currently in an orange, has an orange shirt with an apparent white undershirt sitting next to the counsel to my left and to the court's left. 
And at this time, Your Honor, the government would request that the record reflect an in-court identification of the defendant. Objection, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Walters. Mr. Bowes? Objection. Are your objections the same as those previously voiced? Yes, Your Honor. The record will reflect Agent Steele's in-court identification of the defendant over objection. Agent Steele, post-indictment, did an arrest warrant issue for Heather Antucci Giraffe? Yes, ma'am, an arrest warrant did out of the Eastern District of Tennessee, Knoxville Division. And during the course of your investigation, how did you learn of the defendant's whereabouts? She was, we did not know the exact whereabouts, but she was entered into NCIC, and then I received a call from the United States Secret Service, actually late at night, approximately 11.30 to 11.45, regarding positive contact with Miss Heather Ann Tucci. When did you say she was entered into NCIC? What does that mean specifically? That is when we have an arrest warrant for an individual. We don't, we put them into NCIC for both the officer's safety, that is if she were to be stopped or the individual were to be stopped, they would know that there's an arrest warrant for that individual and also simply just to have them picked up. And, and is that what precipitated the call from the U.S. Secret Service to you? Yes, ma'am, the United States Secret Service had come into contact with her and two other individuals when they showed up in Washington, D.C. It's my understanding in a request to meet with President Trump. So, look, he's not answering these questions again. When did you say she was entered into NCIC and what does that mean specifically? He doesn't fucking answer the question. He is dodging all questions about how Heather Ann Tucci's information was put into NCIC that alerts all law enforcement agents that she has a warrant and that she is to be arrested. And he's dodging those questions. I want to point that out. There is no fucking way that when I was in court, if I had somebody's warrant entered into a system, I would have said, Your Honor or Ma'am, it was entered in on such and such a date at such and such a time. And period, that's the end of it. And if you want to know what specifically the NCIC is, it's the National Criminal Information Clearinghouse. At least that's what I remember from my, uh, just pulling off of memory, but I haven't looked that up in a while. Let's, uh, let's see what the acronym stands for. NCIC. National Crime Information Center. All right. Well, there was a clearinghouse acronym too. But basically, this is the database nationwide that people with warrants get entered into. And what else did the Secret Service advise you as to the defendant's whereabouts? The Secret Service provided me hotel information and room number information that we immediately, that following the next morning, I immediately provided to our Washington field office who subsequently made an arrest. So here he's saying he did it immediately, but it was the next morning. But it was immediately the next morning. This coming from... A cop, a prosecuting attorney, a defense attorney, and a judge. This is laughable. All right, well, that's the end of page 40. We're going to shut this off for now. Um, you know, I've also been thinking about the, the case number with all of this, and I'm going to start off my next video talking about that because I think that really ties in with all the rest of these inconsistencies that we're seeing here. And, and what... How non-standard is it that, that uh, 
that you put a warrant out and the Secret Service is the one who comes in contact with you or comes in contact with that subject because they're trying to meet with President Trump? Wow. That's non-standard.